Do you have a herniated disc at L5-S1 and you're wondering, do you have to have surgery for it? Can it heal on its own? If you want to know the answers to that question or those questions, this video is for you. Hi, I'm Dr. Mark Dupuy, Back to Health Chiropractic Clinic Director, and we're talking about herniated discs, specifically L5-S1 herniated discs, although this information can apply to a variety of discs. If you have a herniated disc and it's causing you severe back pain or radiating leg pain, and you want to know if it can heal on its own without surgery, the good news is yes, in many cases it can. Research does suggest that upwards of 80% of all disc herniations, no matter how severe, can heal on their own if you do the right things. We're going to talk about what some of those right things are. First, let's get into some anatomy that makes identifying what we need to do a little bit easier. So the disc itself, when you look at the blood vessels that supply the disc with nutrients, the blood vessels that take away the byproducts of tissue breakdown, the vessels that supply a disc, they don't have valves like the rest of our veins do. So valves keep things moving in one direction. Because discs don't have valves, it's the normal movement of the spine that should be occurring all day long that produces a pumping action on the disc. It's that movement which is responsible for bringing flush, fresh blood into the disc and waste products out of the disc. That's one of the reasons why it wasn't that long ago when providers would suggest bed rest for people with disc herniations but when they studied it, they found out that, oops, that made things worse. Bed rest was not actually helping when they looked at it. And it kind of makes sense because if you are in bed, you're not getting any of that healthy movement to get some pumping action into the disc. So now the challenge is if a disc is herniated and it's swollen and it's painful, well, how do we produce some movement to help the disc if movement often hurts? And that's why many times exercises and in some cases physical therapy doesn't help because the disc is too hot, it's too swollen, and traditional exercise is just too much. So that is what drove the invention of what is known as the axial traction tables, where we actually have an individual lie down and we provide a stretch. The protocols we use, it's a 45 second stretch, a 15 second rest, 45 second stretch, 15 second rest. What we're doing is we're providing some pumping action to the disc to help flush out some of those waste products of the tissue breaking down, get some fresh blood in so we can encourage some healing of that disc. And because the patient's lying down outside of gravity with the knees up, a large pillow underneath the knees, it's often very tolerable. And in many cases, that is the only time when patients are able to get a break from that severe leg pain is while they're undergoing traction. So here's the good news. You don't have to necessarily do this for a long time to know if you are capable of healing. What the research shows is about 20 sessions of axial traction is what's required to know if that disc is capable of healing. Come with me and I'll take you to the axial traction room where you'll be able to see what some of these tables look like. Okay, so here is one of our two traction decompression tables. We use the Dynatron DX2. It's been a workhorse for many years. And again, to review how this works, the patient is lying on the table. There's a set of straps that grab the pelvis. And then that pelvis strap is attached to the computer module. And it's this module here where we can dial up exactly how much force we want to produce that stretch and then how much force we release in between the stretch phases so we get a nice stretch, relaxation, nice pumping action in that disc. And again, it's pretty comfortable. There is also a head unit, which is really neat. We can attach the head unit, patient can spin around and for folks that have acute disc herniations in the cervical spine, this can also help heal there. So again, the takeaway points, no matter how bad that disc looks on an MRI, there is what is suggested by the research to say about an 80% success rate in helping discs heal on their own if you take action to support nutrients in, waste products out, 
Uh, and again, you will know in about 20 sessions or so, if by that time you're not making significant progress, then it is time for MRI, neurosurgical consult, because you might be part of that 20%. Um, nevertheless, 80% is pretty good odds, so we strongly recommend uh, if you have severe back pain or severe leg pain from a herniated disc, especially L5-S1, because that's one of the most common discs to herniate, that you try conservative care first and then proceed to surgery if that doesn't work. Hopefully this helps. Thank you for watching. Reach out if you have any questions, comments, concern, and have a great day.